Welcome to Living Martial Arts with Master Ray Gale, aka The Dark Master. Living Martial Arts discuss and examines the everyday exercise, philosophy, and lifestyle of the martial arts enthusiast. The host talks about his own training, past and present, and he also interviews many martial artists to discover how they continue to live their own martial arts journey. Tune in for top tips on how to get the best out of your martial art. Or perhaps you're thinking of starting a martial art. This podcast offers you an easy way to dip your toe in. Sign up for the newsletter at livingmartialarts.com and get regular updates and training tips direct to your inbox. Follow the Dark Master on Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram at Living Martial Arts. Hi, hello everyone. Once again, uh, you're back with the uh, the Dark Master on the Living Martial Arts podcast. Uh, we have uh, again our fantastic part two with Mr. Tony Stokes, uh, who has much, much experience in, in martial arts, not just one, but many martial arts, and has also uh, traveled to different parts of the world to pursue uh, his martial arts passion and martial arts journey. So once again, uh, Tony, how are you doing? Hi, Ray. How are you doing? Thanks for having me back. No worries. You're very, very welcome. We enjoyed our first chat, so it'd be nice to uh, to do this again and perhaps... Uh, um, I'm sure cover some some of the other ground that we covered before, but some new ground uh, as well. Um, you know, what, one thing I I like to uh, say to my students is that you know us martial artists, martial arts teachers, we're actually just normal people. You know, and um, uh, what, one one thing that I, I mentioned in my I sort of try and get through in my classes is some of the other things that I do, which. which I don't know, helps me with my martial arts, but maybe sometimes takes me away from that, actually. So I always like to find out what, what martial artists do when they're not doing martial arts. And I know that, um, you know, you, you, you said that, uh, you know, you're doing a, a degree at the moment. Um, and, um, you know, well, first of all, how, how is that going? Yeah, it's going okay. Not bad. Yeah, good, good. It's, 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 it's quite, you know, it's a big workload, but it's, it's all going well. Yeah, yeah quite intense anything else anything else that you that, that you do that's not uh, in the martial arts side of things i mean i read a lot you know um yeah. i think uh, just filling filling out the hard drive with good data is yes. important it's people go on about they're obsessed with food they're obsessed with training but it's your your mind does change the same way that your body does depending on what you put inside of it Yes, and there's a lot of studies to show that you know, like that it is true. The way you think and the way that the, what you what you put in what you absorb with yeah. this this gelatinous <laughs> sort of to tofu consistent shaped sort of thing that is is encased. There's a reason it's encased in that thick cranium. You know, yes. <laughs> it needs to be protected because it tells everything else what to do. And uh, yeah, so I, I I fill it with good data. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like you were saying, you don't really watch telly. I mean, that's that's good. Um, but at the same time, it, for me, I'm very specific about what I put in there. So mm. I will watch certain things on telly. I, I'm into podcasts. I, Tim Ferriss is a good one to look up. Yeah. Sam Harris, you know, of course, Joe Rogan. Um, yeah. These are all people that are staples for me. That I these are go tos. Jordan Peterson's another one, which oh, that's great. Jordan Peterson, he's, he's, he's controversial, but I like him. Well, I don't know. Um, do, do, do you think he is? I I, I don't find that controversial. Maybe it's just me, but um, you know, I've I've got his read his book, uh, Twelve Rules for Life. Yeah, that's and, good. Um, and um, I I I I love what he says. I, I don't find I, any of it controversial. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a clinical psychologist, and it's like. It, it, sometimes, uh, you know, neuro, neuro um, scientists have an issue with him, or different, you know, strands of philosophy, or other scholars or academics to sort of say, "Well, actually, you're just, you know, that's generalization." And then you have obviously the woke left that will. Uh, did you see that interview? Is it Tracy Newman? Yes. That, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Famous one. <laughs> A friend who's a journalist, he's good friends with her, and she was like, she was having a bad day. I'm like, no, she wasn't. She was being a, she was being, <laughs> yeah. a, a, a you know what. Yeah. 
but yeah, I mean, it was just, he just buried her, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, I love watching that interview. But it is, it, it is yeah, when he's on form, he's he's fantastic, and I'm I I do enjoy listening to him. Um, sometimes when the media get hold of someone like that who is an academic, they 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 can stray into maybe other realms that are not familiar. Sure. But um, overall, yeah, I love his stuff, you know. Um, yeah. And I would strongly recommend people listen to people like put good stuff in and you get good stuff coming out of your mouth. You know, like Sam Harris is another one, which um, he's a philosopher. He's a PhD in philosophy and he's just he's fantastic. He just, you know, just mind mapping and, mm. you know, it really teaches you how to think, how to talk, how to yeah. just how to structure the way you, you know, do to think about about anything really you know yeah. um i mean other things i do i mean i apart from training myself most of the time um yeah just yeah. you know gen, general yeah general general hobbies are, f- are mostly focused around sort of knowledge and information really yeah well i, I don't think that's a bad thing i mean I, i'm very very similar to myself i, I love to read and um you know, d- different different types of books. I like to, like to read biographies and um, uh, find out about people and how they tick uh, and uh, what makes them tick. And, um, yeah, I, I find that very, very interesting because usually when you dig deep, um, you know, you find a, a very, very different person to what you think uh, you see. Um, I'm, I'm actually reading, uh, I know he's, he's been in the news a lot lately, but I'm reading um, uh, Billy Connolly's book. Okay. Uh, which, which, uh, that's again, interesting an in, interesting interesting uh, pers- person from my youth <laughs> yeah uh, uh, yeah the uh, the trow the trouser sketch uh, yes. remember when, he, on, when he's on stage with the, yes. when he's waddling he's <laughs> full up with water he, yeah. uh, he's interesting because i was in bristol not long ago and um he's actually he, he's got a, there's, there's a gallery there that actually shows his work yes and he's a sculpture yeah um and it's because he's now he's um is it alzheimer's no it's um parkinson's isn't it parkinson's it's parkinson's yeah and he's he's done this artwork that is kind of reflecting the way his mind's thinking yeah yeah and it's really quite interesting see sort of silver sort of chrome figures yeah, the sort of you know, if you Google it, you'll you'll see what he's doing. Yeah, but yeah I went to see that, and that was quite interesting. You know, gall- right. galleries. Yeah, I'm an avid gallery. I mean, I did a degree. My degree was in, you know, design and art history. So, okay, that's something that I I did that in my thirties. Yeah, yeah. Um, creative writing is what I'm doing now. So yeah, I mean, I've always been interested in in the arts and humanities. So yeah, yeah. you know, galleries is a good staple for anyone just to yeah. um. You know, if you look at art, you can see the way people think. Yes. You know what I mean? It's it's the, every, every every single thing that's done well will teach you a reflection of the way that person's thinking and feeling. Sure. And um, that's it's the same. You know, you're talking about martial arts. So every time I look at something that I'm reading, or I'm, or when I look at something like that, I, I'm, you know, it's all about what it what that person's thinking. You know. Mm. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Well, I, I, I guess, I guess, um, as you say, you know, art, music, you know, very sort of similar, trying to uh, reflect back what, what, uh, what that person was, their thought process at the time, you know, particularly with, um, I find that with, with music, with the music that I, that I listen to. Um, yeah, is- and it, it, it sheds light on what other things that you're doing. So, yeah. like, you know, in your training process, you could read something that's totally unrelated to martial arts or training. But yet, because of the way that person's put it or the way that they've the way that they've worded it, you can then apply it to something that you're teaching. Yeah. And that's the that's the beauty of knowledge, is that you can have a system that's totally unrelated to the, to what you're doing. Yeah. But because of the way they approach the information or the research or the, their perspective, you know, their reflection of that. Yeah. you can then apply it to what you're doing and that that all feeds back into what we were talking about before with yeah. you know systems like Jeet Kune Do, which were really systems of thought as opposed to just about fighting people you know? yeah yeah um 
and that that's high level stuff because you know jordan peterson talks about that sort of thing with joe rogan doesn't he you know um so yeah it's great just having other perspectives on things and you need that when you get older as well because it's you yeah. need to you need to feed the hard drive you know <laughs> definitely definitely without a doubt i don't think enough people do unfortunately but, uh, but there we go um yeah. <clears throat> just uh on a similar sort of theme you know what you put in what you, is what you get out you know as i say uh you know, garbage in garbage out um and uh just just going back to sort of um food or uh, diet protocols yeah. you know do, do you have any particular sort of uh thing that you follow um uh, i think those that have been listening to this podcast will know that my diet tends to be very uh animal based these days i, I have gone down the i did go down the vegetarian route for, for yeah. some time uh, it didn't seem to suit me uh certainly with my current regime um i feel strong i feel fit yeah. healthy my digestion is good so yeah. certainly that seems to suit me so i, I don't know if there's anything sure. that that uh, or you know the, the way that you think about your uh, diet regimes yeah that's what joe rogan's doing isn't he He went to a totally meat carnival based yes. diet for a while and he found it helped him yes um when i was when i was in thailand the monks there don't eat after midday or they shouldn't do if they're practicing buddhists real monks yeah yeah and that was interesting to see that because now we know that is intermittent fasting yeah which a lot of people are now applying it it does you know it does work yeah. if you do myself, it the right myself way. included yeah myself included yeah well, time, time restricted eating i use so yeah same thing there are different types of fasting obviously they do it in india as well and the yeah. middle east with ramadan and things and um in all those ancient cultures they all fasted so to me that's an indicator that there's something going on there yeah. and there's been a lot of studies showing that it does it, it, you know, apart from people say about detox, it's more, it's more than that. It, there's a certain thing that does it regulates, you know, um, uh, circadian rhythms when you yes. sleep in the brain and stuff like that. Yeah. So it helps. It helps with a lot of stuff. And obviously the monks would do it to keep their mind clear for meditation. Mm. So when I was there and I would visit the monk in the province that I was living in, I went to see him for a year. Um, they're good. They help you get over trauma as well. There's a certain thing that I went through. He was helping me with, and I was going to see him. And he would stop eating at midday. And then they would chant for about three hours, and it would it would clear their mind for that for that time period. Yeah. Um, and it worked. It does work yeah. because your body isn't processing anything. So the intermittent fasting is definitely something I would. It's been people have been doing it for thousands of years, and it seems to yeah. it seems to work um yeah, the wim hof breathing is, is yeah. a good system again they do it in tai chi and you know uh, qigong, qigong yeah. um yeah i mean uh, try to think what else i mean i've i've gone through periods of i did juicing for a while yeah, you know the, 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 the the raw diet um yeah. testing that out i think that can work but again intermittently yeah um yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I I did juicing for for a while. <clears throat> uh, I, I found it. I did find it beneficial at first, but after a while, it seemed to um, my digestion didn't work as well as it as I thought it should be working. I, I mean, my just digestion on a, on a meat uh, animal based diet has been really really good. You yeah, know, I don't get a lot of gas, and um, does, you know, food doesn't repeat on me. And um, you know, I, I often think, well. You know, if I if I look at myself, then you know my parents were from Jamaica, and uh, all Jamaicans are Africans. Um, so, you know, and they haven't been in Jamaica that long. So prior to that, in Africa, you know, my, my uh, ancestry from Africa, you know, just a few hundred years ago. So, you know, my my ancestors were definitely not eating, um, you know, pasta and um, uh, sweet potato chips. <laughs> yeah, thousands of years of evolution. Now yeah. it's just like have, have McDonald's and pizza. You'll yeah. be alright. Yeah. So uh, you know, my my, <laughs> my, my sort of uh, metabolism is going to be very much uh, you know as the uh, yeah. And obviously, Africa's oh. a big Africa's a big place. Don't get me wrong, uh, but I, I think I, I did actually do a DNA test many years ago, 
Um, okay. They trace my ancestry back to uh, West Africa uh, and the Bantu tribes. Cool. And wow. um, so, yeah, you know, I try, try and eat a little bit more traditionally, let's say that. I, what was interesting, when I was in Asia, I noticed the way that they would eat. Food, food is central to everything in, in Thai culture. As soon as they meet you, they would say, Gingkau uh, Liang, which means, have you eaten yet? Um, that's what they would always say. Yeah. If you were even walking down the road and you would see Thai people, they would flag you down and they would invite you to eat with them, you know? Mm. Um, that sort of tribal sort of mentality, still, like community still exists there. And every time they sit down to eat, there would always be, it's the perfect balance. You'd have the protein, you'd have the carbohydrate, and then you would have lots of leafy green vegetables. And what they would do, it's the same in Vietnam, in Cambodia and Laos, you place the meat inside the leaf and it's like a, yeah, like you would sushi, you'd eat it whole. Yeah, There's yeah. always leafy green vegetables. Yeah. Fresh food, sit on the floor, eat it together. Yeah. You've got, there's been studies proven that if you've got good morale and you're relaxed, you digest food quicker and better. Yeah. They talk, they socialize, they don't eat on their own. Mm. You know, when you sit down for a meal, they would always give you two glasses, which is quite sweet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, why are you eating on your own? Are you crazy? You know, <laughs> so th- th- it's a mindset as well, which comes from a traditional way of thinking. Yeah. Um, but is, isn't that so, yeah. sorry to sorry to stop you there? I'll come back to that. But but do you not yeah. think do you not think that t- traditionally? Because do you know exactly the same thing happens in Jamaica? Yeah, you're right. If you, you if you That's if right. you go if you go to someone's house, so I always remember when I, when I was uh, growing up as a kid, uh, my mum would visit in-laws uh so um you know cousins whatever she said oh and i need to visit auntie such and such and i've got nothing to take her um but you know she gets some food or or some or some um uh, i don't know even apples or oranges and just say oh yeah. here i brought this for you and it yeah. was always always traditional to bring food um because right. in, in jamaica though they didn't have any money they always had food that's I'd, right food they, they were self-sufficient around, yeah or fruit or whatever and when I went to Jamaica for the first time, man, I tell you what, every house, come on, sit down and have some food. Have some food. Yeah, come on, you must eat. And my mum my used to say, my, I used to say to my mum, I'm not hungry. She said, oh, just eat a little bit. You know, it's yeah. rude It's rude not to. Yeah, um, that's right. And, and that was it. So I, I think that that should sort of tradition, more traditional um, societies and family unit. And, and you never did it on your own. It was always together, always together. Right, community. In a, in a family, but sorry, I stopped you there. Know, carry on. No, that's good. What I find, yeah, like in, in Asia, they have like a, a collective culture, whereas in the West, we've developed what could be interpreted as a singular culture. Yes. So we do things on our own. We go by ourselves. We sit by ourselves. We there's a, there's, a, there's a sense of community there which I sort of miss and I do did enjoy, and it's the same in a lot of developing countries, especially in the villages. Mm. You feel a part of something, and I think that affects. It's good for the, your mental state of health. Yeah. And when you're eating in that environment, it changes the way you digest food and the way you think about food. It's not just about eating; it's an exchange of information, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and just the the fact that nothing's frozen, the fact that everything's organic, the fact that they 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 specialize in superfoods in thailand you know you go you get the, the baby coconut you mm. cut the top off you drink yeah. the, the yeah. juice um anyone who's trained there you see them all doing it. it's just yeah. down in these coconuts and um you know things like seaweed and kale and yeah. all these things are just normal yeah um you know there's a, you know the coconut oil uh that kind of yeah, thing yeah. it's just seen as a as a normal everyday food um the the irony is now because of the west they think that mcdonald's and pizza hut is for posh people for rich people that can afford it and you're there going no you have you have a coconut tree in your garden do you realize how, how, how yeah. um, if i get that from waitrose it costs me a fortune yeah you know yeah. um in terms of like supplements um there's a really good thing that i take which people might find helpful called activated charcoal Oh yeah, I, t- I take it myself actually. Yeah, and that's that's really good. They use it for people that get poisoned, don't they? And it, yeah. it, it attracts a negative 
ions in the body. Yeah. That's really good. Activate of charcoal. It's yeah. um, something I picked up in Asia, yeah. and it's uh, that's pretty good with intermittent fasting. If you helps yeah. with detoxing, but it's generally a cleanser. Yeah, it's, it's good. I've, I've I've been taking it for years actually. Activated charcoal, and um, once once again uh, made a massive difference to uh, well, it seemed to make a massive difference to my my system anyway, um, which is why I still take it to this day. And um, yeah, so I, I I'll definitely recommend anybody listening to this is to look into that because. That's well, awesome. Do you know anything about uh, about uh, nootropics? Really? Yes, yes. Well, when I say no about it, um, I. Funny enough, myself and uh, Adam, Adam Woodhouse, maybe you'll be listening to this. Uh, we, we discussed it a, a couple of years ago. And we both started um, looking. Hello, at Adam. And, Hello. And, and actually taking some. Um, and I found I was I've, I was taking some for um, nootropics, trying to take a, a stack for uh, for sleep, basically. Yeah. And uh, it worked. It worked uh, quite well for about four weeks, and then I found the effects sort of tailed off so whether it was a case of you know i should take it for a short period stop take it again and stop i don't really know but uh, i found that the effects started to tail off um and in the end i didn't really have the same effect um sort of eight weeks down the line that i did you know on the very first week um i i have since um not saying i tried a few things but i have actually looked into it a bit more and um I'm still looking into it. It's not something that I've totally dismissed now, but yes. Yeah. There's there's a really good one if you can get hold of it. Um, the brand name is called Pro Vigil, and it's the act the act the ingredient is is called Modafinil. Oh yes, yeah, and Modafinil. This this one I used to be able to get hold of that in Thailand. Yeah. Um, in in the pharmacy there, could you get anything over there, mate? Yes, exactly. And, <laughs> And uh, damn the doctors, they won't give it to me over here. And it's originally for narcolepsy, but um, the the studies have shown that, you know, a lot of people take it like pilots and high-end people uh, people that are studying or lecturers and stuff like that. And it just focuses in the brain. It's very much, if you've seen the film, um, Limitless. Yes. That's what it does. It's the real life version of that. Um, You know, people like Tim Ferriss talk about this quite a lot. You know, and how 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 these nootropics work, um, and it's that's that's quite a bit more of a serious one, but um, yeah, but it bloody works, you know. And, uh, yeah, and I've heard a lot about it. Heard a lot about the daffodil. In fact, um, a guy that I listen to um, a podcast, uh, Dave Asprey. Oh, uh, Dave Asprey, yeah, bulletproof. Yeah, yeah, I I listen to him quite a lot, and um, uh, he talks about. Um, well, certainly a while back, anyway, not so much recently. But he talks about talked about uh, modafinil. There was a bit of contra- bit of controversy about all Dave Asprey, wasn't there, with the uh, the microtoxins in coffee? And uh, oh yeah, Joe, yeah. Joe Rogan said, "No, oh, we did studies. There is the microtoxins are in every type of coffee." That that put me off him a bit after that. Well, you, you, yeah, no, I, I get it. I mean, I, I still, I mean, I'll, I'll have coffee uh, before 12, before twelve yeah. o'clock with, with with my butter in it um thc uh coconut oil and the yeah, um, yeah, grass fed yeah. butter yeah i mean I'll, I'll i'll have that not every day but i will have it um but i think i think if you're going to get coffee you have to get expensive stuff which is yeah. um yeah i mean i mean they've, they've got make um, it yourself well they've, they've got um the one when i get um I, I do get it online uh, but it's got an analysis and report of actually um the levels of toxin within the coffee but yeah, I mean, it, it is it is a crop. People don't realise it. That um, you know, the thing is, though, all all coffee has microtoxins in it. Yes. But yeah. When it goes through the pasteurisation process, that all gets eliminated. Yeah. So he was actually yeah. incorrect saying that. But and fair play to Joe Rogan, he picked him up on it. But what yeah. what's interesting is that you don't you know anyone can make that coffee. You know, if you get a good quality bean, yeah, and you can add the 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 THC oil um just from coconuts and then you can just add grass-fed butter you know yeah, yeah. but it's yeah. um yeah it's it's a good combination yeah it's all but it's all borrowed knowledge and then recycled and branded very cleverly but oh, of course of course but yeah. um but yeah it's, it's good stuff i mean some of those supplements work mm. i don't a lot of people ask about protein yeah people have too much protein in their diet but not enough fiber actually 
you know, well, you know, 25 grams of protein per se, 30 if you're a big guy. You know, leafy green vegetables is I've I've got I've got an interesting play on that though. <laughs> because um I mean I I I I listen but the first time when I was going on this this sort of um uh, animal based diet. Uh, there's, yeah. there's a there's a doctor that I listen to called um Dr. Paul Saladino. Um okay. and um he he was stating said actually if you go on an animal based diet and you don't have um you know vegetables and blah 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 um but you you know you have organs liver heart brain that type of thing you don't need fiber now i remember thinking oh that's quite interesting um and he said i said you'll find out very quickly that actually you'll do a lot better without fiber (laughs) and you know for me it's been true i don't have hardly any fiber and i tell you what i've never been (laughs) i'm allowed to say this on a podcast yeah I've never been as regular <laughs> or, 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 or the volume. Yeah. <laughs> what can I say? The volume. Slow, slow down, Ray. Ray, man, we don't want to get taken off the air by your outlandish. <laughs> the, the volume. But it, it, I think, I think what, what I've realised, certainly, um, with doing many different sort of uh, food regimes, and different ways of eating, mm. is one size doesn't fit all. Right, and I, I know people say, "Oh, we're all the same," but no, I don't think we are actually. Depends where um, you're from as well. Yeah, yeah, your your background, your heritage, and so on. Yeah. Um, but certainly, yeah. certainly for me, um, if, if I have uh, a lot of veg and things like that, I get get terrible problems. I mean, pulses. I don't digest pulses at all. I know people have problems generally with things like pulses, but yeah. for me, it, it's just a no no. Um, and when you consider, you know, Afro Caribbeans and Asians have problems right, with, yeah. with milk mm, um, yeah. and digesting milk then yeah. you know there, there is a difference there between you know um certain uh, ethnicities around the world so yeah yeah there, there is there is a lot of there are theories about you know why mm. the intestinal tract is so long in a, in a human being mm. and then why it's so short in a carnival mm. right yeah. and why we have molars you know mm. These are yeah. all molars. And people go, well, what about the front eye teeth? Well, yeah, you look at a, a primate, they do that yeah. to peel fruit like yeah. bananas, which is what we used to do. Um, so there is that biological yeah. theory behind it. But the fact is nobody really knows um, because we weren't there. We can only yeah. theorise that some what we used to eat raw meat and we accidentally dropped it on a fire one day and they went, oh, it tastes even better when it's cooked and I can eat more yeah. of it. Yeah, and then yeah. there was, that's when the... The brain started to grow and then you get into all sorts of theories about evolution and how you know paleontologists think yeah, yeah. the evolution of dip- but you're right it's i think it's to do with geography and thousands of years of evolution which is why certain groups like in asia got used to eating what they eat mm. but that happened over a long time and their body would change to that the only thing i would say of course it's better to just eat balanced you know carbs yeah protein vegetables try and have some fruit now and again and i think you can't go wrong really you know yeah and, and also I, I i i mean again i've said this on previous podcasts for, for me we, we've forgotten how to listen to our bodies yeah. i think that's that's the thing as well is that sometimes you might eat something and then three hours later you think oh i've got a bit of a bit of a tummy oh. ache but but then you don't associate that with what you've eaten three hours before where you whereas you should think well what did i eat um something's not agreeing with me and i think listening to your body uh, not not just you know if your tummy hurts but also uh, yeah. eating something you know if you're into physical training and fitness and you've had something you think well actually yeah crumbs i feel really strong i can, you know i can I, I seem to be able to to go on a bit longer here or whatever then yeah. you know that that must be or, well, I don't say it must be, but it could be something to do with you know what you've eaten and maybe analysing that. But I think we've lost that that ability generally to listen to our bodies um, because a lot of people are in a constant state of well, I don't feel very well anyway. <laughs> yeah, there, there is there is a theory like you know eat, eat you know don't eat anything with the face, right? 
or, or just, you know, whatever grows on the tree or comes out of the ground. That's why it's hanging fruit because it's there for you to pick it. You know, it's the, yeah. it doesn't run away when you try and kill it. That's why it's being, you can pull it out of the ground and, you know, it is good for you. But I think things have changed. We've evolved in a different way. But um, yeah. I, I, I just think balance, really. Yeah, listen to your body. Some people say only eat when you're hu- hungry. <laughs> a bodybuilder is eating every three hours. Um, personally, I don't, you know, bodybuilding and that kind of thing. It's the human, the human frame is not meant to look like that, you know. Um, well, well, no, no, and it doesn't because if if you look at uh, the few hunter grab gatherer tribes that are left in the world, none of them mm. look like that. <laughs> you no. know, they're, they're quite they're quite scrawny and skinny, really, and low low body fat, low body um, fat, you know. high muscle density. Yeah, exactly. They're functional, basically. Yeah. You know, yeah. they can climb, they can run, they can jump, you know, yeah. they can hide. That That is a functional person. I think that if you look at a lot of the MMA guys, you know, or, or a good runner or a good climber, they have that holistic body strength. They do total body movement exercises, you know, where they use everything in conjunction, kettlebells or whatever. Climbers, climbers are people that I look at. You know, look at their core. Mm. You know, they're not doing hundreds of setups. They don't need to, because they're using their body yeah. in a natural way, yeah, the way we way. used to. They're not yeah. isolating and separating and taking loads of supplements. Mm. They're training the way the body is designed mm. to move. Yeah, yeah. And I, th- I think that's overall a healthy way to do it. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, there's. Uh... Well, I'm trying to think who it is. Uh, I think it's the oh, what's his name. I can't remember any. There's, there's another podcast I listened to. He, he wrote a book called um, uh, Eat, Eat, Move, Sleep. Um, oh, you know, yeah. Try, try, I, I, try yeah. Co- cover those, but um, uh, you know, just 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 things like that. You know, eat, eat, eating in a um, you know in a good way, uh, making sure that you're moving in a good way. Um, you know, throughout the day. And uh, sleeping well, you know, trying to go to bed at the same time, getting up at the same time, obviously trying to catch some early morning sun, um, which, which is... Sun gazing, uh, bit of sun gazing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I try and do a little bit. I try and do a little bit of grounding as well, take take my shoes off, get in the park, um, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, there, uh, there's, a, there's a reason why monks walk barefoot, you know. Yes, yes. It, yeah. Even even that they teach you how to walk in a certain way of contemplation. Yeah. The minimum yeah. amount of body language is assessed because yeah. it's a reflection of what you're thinking or the way you if you there's a trait that bruce used to do where he would walk behind people and, and copy their body language yeah. then he could you could tell what mindset they're in right so if you fought if you if you mimic mm. primates do it if you mimic the way someone's walking you can sort of re, it gives you an emotional blueprint of what mindset they're in right uh, because the body doesn't lie you know yeah yeah so that's quite interesting a lot of fighters do that you'll see as well you know yeah 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 i think also also as well as the, the um they, they reckon they recommend that don't they when um you know if you're in a quite an important um, mirroring it's called yeah yeah conversation with somebody you know mir- mirroring their actions um, yeah during the conversation yeah as a, as a tactic as well. I, I, I met Tony Robbins back in 2007 in there. Oh, okay. I went to one of his seminars in Singapore and he talks about mirroring and yeah. we did uh, something called a fire walk, you know, where you take your shoes off and they heat the fire up to over to a thousand degrees and you, you walk across it, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I, I put my hand up and I said, I'm only here cause I saw you in shallow how um, <laughs> and uh, the film and um banana hands with uh, jack black and uh, he, he thought it was hilarious but yeah he's quite an interesting bloke um yeah. it's a bit american it's a bit pr it's a little bit yeah. you know i find it but, hard, hard to listen to but yeah i know you mean yeah, really it sort of talks in that sort of yeah. hey yeah, yeah. don't eat don't eat me tony you're huge but um <laughs> he's uh it's interesting he does the um a lot some of the stuff we're talking about yeah the, 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 um the, I, I wouldn't necessarily agree with all of it, but I think overall he's good at what he does because there are a lot of people that copy it with NLP and life coaching. He's, you know, I'm never going to be told what to do by a life coach who's 24 and he's got his own YouTube channel. But the good thing about Tony is that he did it organically. Yeah. 
um, and he taught himself from a place of truth. Yeah, yeah. And he, he's done what he says. That's why I quite like him. But um, but now there's the trouble is it's like again there's too many of them. Well, I mean, ultimately he's a you know a motivational speaker, guru, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, that, he calls that's... himself he calls himself the why guy. Yeah, yeah. So he he he, he tells you why you're yeah. doing it because they don't yeah. like the term motivational speaker i know but. i know i know he does i know he doesn't um my my, my favorite <laughs> and uh, during, during the the 80s i got into um uh for want of a better word self-development books if you want to call it that I, I don't really call them that but you know a lot of people do and um yeah my favorite actually mm. and someone that i love listening to which might surprise you because uh, it's got a very very deep south american accent the zig ziglar um, yeah zig ziglar yeah, yeah. Uh, i i just thought he was fantastic um because i think it was the fact that he did a lot of his with humor as well uh, i found him quite humorous um and um i think when you first start listening to him you think it sounds like a, a baptist preacher <laughs> it's really difficult a, lot of, a lot of them were back just preachers well, a, lot, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of them were but uh, I actually really uh, really loved a lot of his stuff I still got a lot of his stuff today on um, yeah. digital on audio but can I listen to it from time to time yeah they were selling his uh, the Robbins so that was one of Tony Robbins sort of gurus oh was um, it okay Stig Sigler yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think they've moved I think they've developed a lot more now and I think they that, have um, they've they, they've honed it a bit like martial arts, they've honed it to a, a point where they've they're a bit more realistic with what it is, you know. No, I, I get that. I still like Zig though. I'm, I, I, he's, he's always going to be my my favorite. I, I won't be moving on from him. He's got, <laughs> so. good, he's, got he's got a good voice. I mean, if 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 a good theory or a good me- yeah. principle or a good maxim works, if it's, yeah, yeah. it's if it works, it works. It's as simple as that, you know. It obviously, depends what works for you, but like that whole platform that whole sort of business went through a really weird period oh yeah definitely yeah um but yeah i think uh so, some of them are worth listening to there's a guy for people that might want to get into it to, to tim tim ferris he's good he did the four yeah. hour work week well, and, I've, um, I've, I've got both of his books actually where we can the four hour uh, uh, uh cook um body four hour body yeah um, four hour body I said, yeah, yeah. In, fact, in fact my eldest son bought it for me um, yeah bought those books and uh i've got some on audio as well yeah audio I, again, books are great yeah again i i, I like I, I i do like it i do like um uh tim ferris i mean when i very first started listening to him I, I did get a lot lot out of lot out of it i sort of went off of him i don't know why um i it, it didn't sort of resonate with me as time went on but um mm. it's certainly good stuff it's certainly good stuff yeah the principles are sound i think yeah. it we, everyone goes through a phase yeah um of of like absorbing certain types of people yeah and then what i think once you've you've got it you can take that box and you can go right i can apply that to what i'm trying to do yes yeah it's all about, it's all about context you know yeah i was just looking to see what I've, what I've got i was looking on my phone here see which ones i've got but i've, I've got quite of um uh quite a few of his so, i mean i still i still get um alerts uh, from him Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I his uh, every Friday or whatever he gives you five things to read, and that's right. Yeah, he's, yeah that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's very good. So I mean, sorry. Back back to I mean, this this is martial arts really because it's all uh, it's all about life. It's all about life. It's all so, linked. Uh, it's all linked, it's all, Raymond. It's, it's all linked. Yeah, I was going to ask you about you know um, you were sort of you were sort of talking off air about perhaps some of the things you're going to do within. Um, uh, martial arts sort of going forwards um i don't know any, any ideas of, of how you might uh move move on not because i say move forwards not really move forwards because we're, we're just moving but what you'd like to do from from this place within your martial arts yeah well i thought I'm, i thought i was moving in with you you and alex I've been oh, right. in a, in a, little, a little room under the stairs and I yes can... definitely definitely me and so Dick, I'll be like, Dick. Dexter, Dexter is my cat. Dexter lives yeah. here with me. I, I could be, I could, I could be like Cato out of um, <laughs> Pink Panther, just sort of jumping out on you when you're not ready, like test, testing you. Oh, ah, no, I'm never not ready. Now. <laughs> not, not now, Cato. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm predominantly focusing on studying, but yeah, um, 
you know, and also I teach English and uh, those are my two main focuses at the moment. Sure. Um, I'm looking for maybe somewhere to teach commercially. Okay. And I have, I have been working with a gym where I've been doing mini seminars on striking pad work, yeah. you know, how to hold the pads, how to strike correctly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm looking for, for anywhere. So, yeah. you know, um, well, what quite we welcome. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, what I'll do is, I mean, I'll put, I'll put some of your details in the show notes here. So, um, you know, anybody oh. that uh, is listening to this, uh, that might want to uh, use any of your your services, um, sure. Or you know, get there. Hopefully, you know, get something from that. So, uh, yeah, you know, if you let me know, um, you know, where people can find you and uh, how you can get in contact, that'd be great. Cool. Um, you know, absolutely. And uh, I mean, we're sort of coming to the end of of this one. Uh, what I what I'd like to do in the future uh, is to have you on again, and uh, wow. you, you know, find out find out how you're getting on. Um, perhaps uh, discuss a little bit more about some of the uh, specific uh, martial arts that, that you, you've uh, taken part in and, you know, uh, the benefits of, of each, if you like. Um, sure, yeah. You know, but, but that'd be really, into it. Really, yeah, that'd be really, really good. Really, really good. And, um, you know, it's, it's, been a, it's been a real pleasure uh, chatting to you and after, after many, many years. Um, one thing I find now for me is that, mm teaching youngsters in their 80s that are now obviously uh, a lot older 80s and 90s and they're, they're a lot older now and i'll say to people is that it's great because i've got students that have been with me for you know 35 years for example uh, and now they teach me it's great <laughs> and, yeah. they, and a lot of them know a lot more than me which, which is fantastic um and and it, it's uh, for me it's a fantastic place to be uh, i've met so many lovely people within martial arts uh, and managed and had the privilege and the honour to teach so many people as well. And um, for me, the, be- the most I've got, the best thing I've got out of martial arts is the relationships I've made. It's been been truly awesome, truly awesome. Yeah, I think there is a respect that that you like a bond that you get with martial arts, which is very honest, mm. which you don't seem to get quite with mm. other maybe other jobs. You know. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's really nice and it's yeah. nice when you've got that circle of growth where you can you know the people that you helped are now helping you yeah yeah sure sure no, that's brilliant and uh, also i mean I'd, I'd really love i know we spoke about it we spoke about it briefly and i spoke about it uh, i'd love to um, once i at some point i'm going to make this uh, a visual podcast hmm. you know i'd love to do you know three or four minutes on some of your uh, some of the techniques you think are quite yeah. helpful for people i uh, just think things like that some uh, some snippets so you know, we'll stay in, stay in touch and uh, hopefully yeah, do definitely. that. Cool. We're we'll after, we're, you know, that'd be good sort of deconstructing different methods and yeah, um, something which can maybe help people. Uh, yeah. yeah, it'd be good to do something something with you guys sometime soon, you know? We're yeah, after. definitely. Okay. No, that's, that's lovely. Well, listen, thank you very, very much. Um, I've really, really enjoyed uh, chatting with you. Uh, I'm sure my audience has enjoyed the, the chat as well. And uh, again, if you've got any questions, uh, for uh, Tony, you know, just uh, send them through the podcast, or we'll put some information uh, on the show notes about how to contact him uh, if you want to connect and chat with him. Uh, I'm sure he'd love to uh, love to do that. So. Yeah, I mean, um, nwn at uh, podcast is on is my Twitter handle because right. um, it's the, no words necessary as the uh, podcast that I was doing. And okay. just if you just put into Facebook the martial arts workshop, you'll see a, Excellent. a page that comes up. So you can just send me a message there if anyone wants any kind of brilliant. tuition. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, I know you do. Obviously, again, you do private tuition. So if anybody listening would like to uh, do some private tuition with Tony, just uh, either go, as you mentioned, to the Facebook page he's just mentioned. Uh, I'm sure I'll be happy to help. Uh, and thank you very, very much, uh, Tony. Thank you to all the... Living Martial Arts Podcast as well. We'll see you soon uh, on the next podcast. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Raymond.